Thank you very much. And it's uh, great to be here with you in this virtual um, conference, particularly in the time of um, coronavirus, um, when hopefully these things will be back in person in the um, near future. So anyway, we're going to be talking about a rapid microbiological method that can be applied to water testing, and it's quite an exciting one. So um, let's go over to it. Hello, my name is Tim Sandal, and I'm really pleased to be with you today for this session. And we're going to be having a look at rapid microbiological testing. And this is applying a method for looking at water. And this is the Milliflex quantum system. So what I'm going to be covering in the session is uh, a little bit about the background. So this is the application of the Milliflex quantum to a pharmaceutical facility located in the southeast of England. And the facility has two types of water. It has purified water and water for injection, and they are the pharmaceutical grade water, but of course it also has incoming mains water as well. And the mains water is used to produce purified water through reverse osmosis, and then the purified water is converted to water for injection by distillation. So these are fundamental waters used for pharmaceutical processing. Now, the problem statement facing this facility is that the incubation times are quite long. So for the water for injection, it's per pharmacopoeia, which is five days incubation, but for the purified water and the mains water, these have been set through qualification studies using classical culture techniques, and they run for many more days. So with long incubation times, this means that the response to out of trend situations, following facility shutdowns, following maintenance on the water system, or just knowing how the system in general is performing is much delayed. So while we have to wait, we don't know what's happening to the water system. So the challenge is to reduce those incubation times down. And this is where rapid microbiological methods have an advantage. So these are technologies that aim to produce more sensitive, accurate, precise and reproducible results. And they also seek to deliver faster time to result. And this is when compared to conventional growth-based methods. And they also introduce a degree of automation as well. So they can offer a number of benefits and such a benefit area is with water testing. So the Milliflex quantum is designed to work with conventional membrane filtration. And it's a method that uses a universal enzymatic fluorescent staining technique of viable microorganisms. So the idea by staining colonies as they start to form, they can be detected earlier. And this happens when the membrane is placed into a reader and it's subject to an excitation wavelength uh, to detect uh, fluorochrome when a dye has been added. So basically we're getting the early detection of fluorescent micro colonies. Now, before any alternative methods can be used, they must undergo some form of comparative testing with the method that we're seeking to replace, so some form of validation. And in order for that to be meaningful, we need to apply some form of statistical verification. So we also need to follow some standard steps. So we need to assess the accuracy of the method. And we're attempting this using type cultures. We also need comparability, which we do by testing samples simultaneously with both methods. And we can introduce other elements like ruggedness as well, which I'll explain. And also we want to get a degree of effectiveness, stability, whatever. And in this part, we can introduce some stressed microorganisms as well. So we're gonna have a look at the um, incubation times and we're gonna have a look at two types of water, mains water and water for injections. So with mains water, this is the supply of drinking water, which we want to soften, 
uh, subject to electrodeionization, then reverse osmosis to produce our final purified water. Now, this particular facility, the incubation time was set at 14 days using Reasoner's 2A agar, R2A agar, and at a temperature of uh, 20 to 25 degrees um, Celsius. And different agars have been looked to get to this position, but this is what it ended up with. So it's a very long time to get anything meaningful from our supply of water. So a study was undertaken to address this um, incubation time problem. And this involved comparing the Miflex system with conventional test methods using R2A agar. Um, and it was important to ascertain what would happen with tight cultures, what would happen when we run the methods side by side, and also to ensure that um, there was no danger of introducing cross-contamination. So we needed to assess negative controls as well. Now, to conduct any study, then a protocol is required. So we need to set out our aims, method, acceptance criteria, determine the number of samples, decide on what consumables we're going to use, what equipment we're going to use, the time period for the study, the number of analysts involved in the statistical method by which we're going to analyze our data. And also we need a list of consumables and equipment as shown on the slide. So first of all, we're going to have a look at what might be involved in comparing two methods. So for this, 100 samples was decided to be used as a reasonable number to draw some statistical inferences from. So here, 400 millilitres was taken and it was divided between the two test systems. So both test systems saw a 200 mil filtration. So one duplicate tested against the millipore quantum and one against the traditional testing method. And then after samples were filtered, then the membranes were rinsed using Ringer's solution, which is an isotonic um, solution. And the samples were incubated at 20 to 25 degrees. And both sets of samples were then taken out the incubator and, and looked at at two days, three days, six days, and uh, 15 days. So to evaluate the um, quantum, we did this like two day look and at around 48 hours the samples were taken out and stained with the quantum reagent then incubated for 30 minutes and then um, subjected to the quantum reader and then after this exercise had been done then the samples were again restained at three days and six days so we're trying to build up a picture of when we're getting the optimal colony growth now gather the data and we need to assess the data. And the method of assessing the data was using a statistical method called uh, Minitab, and it ran to be version 18. And the statistical method chosen was ANOVA, analysis of variance, which is a standard statistical method for looking at differences in the population between two groups. And we're looking for a p-value, which is a measure of significance. And we set a null hypothesis that um, there would be no differences between the two populations. And then like any good experiment, we're setting out to disprove that analysis. But before we do this, it's important to make sure that the data is suitable for ANOVA. So we can have a look at that by setting up uh, what's called probability plots. And these allow us to assess the distribution of the data, because if it's not normal distribution, then it's not going to work too well against standard statistical methods. So here you can see some probability plots, and clearly the data is not normally distributed. And this was at two days, and there was a similar pattern at um, three days, and also at six days. So we've got this data that's skewed and slightly variable. So what we need to do is transform the data. And the method of transforming the data was by using logarithms. So the data was transformed using log 10. And this reduced the skewness and gave an approximation of normal distribution, allowing the data to be subjected to the ANOVA. And the ANOVA method selected was single factor ANOVA. And this looks at whether there's any statistical variation between the two counts. 
and whether we can support or disprove this null hypothesis that the two populations are broadly equal. Um, so we came up with the data to use for the ANOVA and then put it through a statistical package and came out with the results. Looking at the p-value, so if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. So we're no longer saying that the two populations are equal. And we found this at um, fairly um, early on at three days. And this says that the incubation time from the milliflex quantum was significantly different and better than the conventional membrane filtration method at three days. So remember conventional method, 14, 15 days to get reliable results. We're getting reliable results at three days. Further work was done and we got optimal results by six days. So you can pick somewhere between three and six days to apply this rapid microbiological method. So um, there's a lot of advantages then in adopting such a method in order to get um, suitable um, results and results that we can then uh, react faster to than we could do using the conventional method. So that represents a big improvement in incubation times. So that's mains water, the incoming water. We want to have a general control over it, but it's not the supercritical water. Supercritical water is water for injection. That's water that is um, generally free of microorganisms and also um, of very low endotoxin values. So again, there was analysis of 100 samples and one-way ANOVA was again used to look at any significant differences between the counts. Um, and it was found that around day two to three that the uh, quantum gave significantly better result, albeit that the actual counts are quite low, but it was still a shaving off the five to seven days that the pharmacopoeia requires for conventional incubation of water for injections as well. Now, it's also important that the method was tested against um, type cultures. And this is to show that they can recover organisms that might be found from the sampling environment or any other organisms that we may wish to screen for. So it's best to bias always towards the types of organisms that would be found in the target area. So in this case, we're looking for perhaps a, a greater abundance of aquatic organisms. We also want other organisms that might be present, say, from sampling error via personnel and so on. So an range of organisms were selected and the counts were evaluated at different time points. So day two using the quantum device and day five using the uh, traditional method and the counts were comparable at these time points. So we can get uh, good recoveries against 70% or more from what we might expect from these type cultures within two days for the quantum compared to five days using conventional membrane filtration. And also, this also needs to take into account any variant because we want to do lots of replicates to prove this. So this was also shown with a variance of with, well within 10%. So um, we're getting good consistency. And consistency is also important when we consider ruggedness as well. So ruggedness is introducing variation to the validation. So we're looking at different lots of media, different membrane lots, different reagent lots, different analysts different instruments to be assessed and so on. And if all of this also still comes out good and we're still getting those kind of acceptable recoveries, then we know we've got a method that can be subjected to the rigors of general testing. An additional thing that was done was an assessment of stressed microorganisms. So these are microorganisms in nutritively deprived environments. So they're um, not gonna grow necessarily as well. Uh, they're adapting to their particular ecological niche. They probably change their cellular function and the way that their, uh, say, protein amino acid sequences might work, for example. So if they recover stressed organisms, then we've got an even stronger method. So in terms of addressing acclimatized organisms, these are going to be closer to the environment from which the test samples were drawn, low nutrients, and also potentially subjected to osmotic shock and having undergone a stress response. So there's different ways to stress organisms. 
Uh, and for this, I went to the work of the late Scott Sutton, who had done some experiments by holding organisms with some colleagues in um, uh, distilled water um, for prolonged periods of time. So you not collect with a high level, you hold, you see what you've got, and then you use those organisms um, for the test method. So it's quite an effective way of, of subjecting organisms to that. And in terms of the data we saw, so here we've got a data set with various organisms. The EN references are some isolates from the manufacturing facility that we used. V is the viable conventional method, F is the fluorescence method. So you can see already by day one or day two, we're getting good detection of these stressed organisms. And we're getting detection earlier and better than we are with the conventional method. Another advantage with something like the quantum being a cultural based method is that we can also take off colonies and subject those to uh, microbiological identification. So it's often because we're reading micro colonies to start with, we would need to um, re incubate the um, plates and confirm we've still got viability after the dye has been added, and then we can take those organisms and take them through to microbial identification because understanding what the organisms are is important for trending and we see the same organisms if we've got a particular issue of concern a biofilm or something like that and also to work out the origins is it likely to be really from the water system or is it going to be cross-contamination from an analyst it's also important to define the regulatory strategy when adopting a microbiological method so there's good advice in the uh, European Pharmacopeia and the United States Pharmacopeia. And also Michael Miller's uh, rapid microbiological blog is an excellent place to get all this kind of information. And approaching the regulatory strategy was more straightforward because we're using our cultural based method. So it's quite easy to um, license with the regulator because the method is not too dissimilar and it's much more acceptable by regulators, but in general, licensing rapid microbiological methods is fairly straightforward. So in summary, what we've done is have a look at the adoption of a rapid microbiological method for testing water. We've seen that we've got uh, better uh, data more quickly. So we've got faster time to result, more accurate counts, good robustness. Um, and generally the detection times were at, at the best four to five times faster. We're also picking up slightly damaged cells, which you probably could pick up from the um, straightforward conventional method. And we can also reincubate and identify uh, organisms. And we've also looked at how we might undertake um, regulatory or license change. So, Thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully this presentation was of um, value to you. So I'm Dr. Tim Sandal and um, happy to move on to any questions you might have. So thank you very much.